Today, we filed an appeal for certiorari at the United States Supreme Court in Beavis versus Naperville, our lawsuit challenging Illinois' so-called assault weapons ban and a similar AR-15 sale ban in the city of Naperville. This has been a very long time coming, eagerly awaited by many of you and also by us at the National Association for Gun Rights. But by no one has it been awaited more eagerly than Robert Beavis, the gun store owner in Naperville who started this whole thing by rallying opposition to the Naperville ban that was passed by his city council in 2022. So, today's official Supreme Court appeal has been in the making since shortly after the Supreme Court handed down the Bruin ruling in June of 2022. Before that ruling, the gun rights world had been in a litigation desert due to the lower court's repeated defiance of the court's 2008 Heller precedent. And for over 10 years, the Supreme Court had just let them get away with it. With Bruin, the court finally said no more and put a very decisive end to the lower court's two-step balancing test that they'd been using to kill gun rights cases whenever they landed on their dockets. Now, as y'all will recall, that balancing test was literally a cost-benefit analysis on the Second Amendment. They would say, yeah, the Second Amendment says this, but does the importance of that Bill of Rights guarantee actually outweigh the supposed public safety concern? Now, when leftist judges ask that question, is rhetorical, they don't actually care about the answer because they're determined to rule against gun rights. And that is how we got to gun rights losing in case after case for over a decade, even when clear Supreme Court precedent said otherwise. Bruin gave us hope that was about to change, but it would only work if we were prepared to force the question on every gun rights issue. Now, there's only so much we can do, we can't actually force them to comply with Bruin. That's why the real test is for the Supreme Court. By bringing a wave of pro-gun litigation, one of our cases would eventually make its way up to the Supreme Court and we would have the opportunity once and for all to see if they're serious this time about holding those lower courts accountable for disobeying the Constitution and their own precedents. That was the idea behind our gun ban lawsuit offensive. We filed lawsuits against so-called assault weapons bans and magazine bans all across the country in nearly half of the federal circuits with the goal of getting to the Supreme Court and asking for a nationwide precedent striking down assault weapons bans. Today, we're asking for that ruling. Our Illinois lawsuit was originally going to start with the city of Highland Park, Illinois, which at the time was the only assault weapons ban we could find in the Seventh Circuit. But while we were getting that lawsuit ready, we found out that the nearby city of Naperville was in the process of banning the sale of so-called assault weapons. And that local gun store owner, Rob Beavis, was leading the charge against the passage of that ordinance. Now, unfortunately, the city council thumbed their noses in his face and the faces of all the citizens who showed up to oppose the passage of that gun ban. And this is more insulting than ever when you realize that Naperville had actually invited Rob to locate his gun store in their city. And he's been a well-respected institution there for a long time. But pass it, they did. So we teamed up with him to file a lawsuit against Naperville as well. Well, later that year, the Illinois legislature then passed a statewide gun ban. We already had the two lawsuits in Illinois over the exact same issue, Highland Park and Naperville. So we made motions in both lawsuits to amend the complaints to include that state gun ban. That only went through in the Naperville case, and so that was the case that took off, while our Highland Park lawsuit went on ice. And from that point on, the Highland Park case has been duplicative, and the Naperville case was statewide, so we recently withdrew the Highland Park case. The goal for us has always been to do that as efficiently as possible, and the Naperville case applies to the entire state anyway. So once we get a Supreme Court ruling striking down the Illinois gun ban, we can always come back to Highland Park if we need to force them to comply. Meanwhile, the Naperville case, which I'll just refer to now as the Illinois case, went to the district court where we got a terrible ruling. Then we appealed to the Seventh Circuit where we got another terrible ruling. Then we asked for en banc review by the entire Seventh Circuit and they said no, basically affirming every single element of the three judge panel's decision. So, today we appealed to the Supreme Court. Now, as you know, during that process, we filed two emergency appeals, basically begging the Supreme Court to just suspend the gun ban's enforcement on a temporary emergency basis. Those were Hail Mary moves, if you will, and we knew they had a very slim chance of succeeding. But we tried it because, for one thing, Rob Beavis' business was hanging on by a thread, and for another thing, 
the Illinois gun owners were staring a gun registration deadline in the face. Now, unfortunately, the Supreme Court didn't consider either of those things enough reason to step in. I can't exactly tell you why. A right delayed is a right denied, and there's no question of actual harm here on both of those counts. But sadly, the court refused. But what we did not see coming is Justice Amy Coney Barrett demanding a response from Illinois in both of those emergency appeals. Most emergency appeals just get rejected. But Justice Barrett demanded a response to our appeal in both situations and then referred the matter to the entire Supreme Court in both cases. While the first emergency appeal was pending, the Seventh Circuit panicked and took the very unusual step of expediting oral arguments on our main case. Or as our fantastic lawyer, Barry Arrington, put it, they put us on the rocket docket. Only then did the Supreme Court say no, which was consistent with their approach of not really getting involved with Second Amendment cases until all the lower court boxes are checked off, provided, of course, that it doesn't take too long. With the second emergency appeal, the Supreme Court only said no after the Seventh Circuit denied us on bonk review. So it's not a stretch to think that they knew that our official search petition on the case itself would be before them very soon, and they would rather just wait for that. We are hoping that was the thought process anyway, and we're gonna find out soon because this appeal for cert has been filed now, and we're officially asking the Supreme Court to rule on the Illinois assault weapons ban. We're not just asking them to give us a temporary emergency injunction. So our appeal asks three questions of the Supreme Court. One, is the state of Illinois' ban of certain handguns constitutional in light of the holding in D.C. versus Heller that handgun bans are categorically unconstitutional? Two, is the in common use test announced in D.C. versus Heller hopelessly circular and therefore unworkable? Three, can the government ban the sale, purchase, and possession of certain semi automatic firearms and firearm magazines? tens of millions of which are possessed by law-abiding Americans for lawful purposes when there is no analogous founding era regulation. In addition, we're also pointing out all the ways the Seventh Circuit got it wrong and violated Heller and Bruin. The Seventh Circuit said that AR and AK platform firearms are not arms under the Second Amendment. They actually said they're not guns at all. The Seventh Circuit also said that the in common use test in Heller is faulty circular reasoning and it can't be used. The Seventh Circuit said that Bruin's history and tradition test is hypocritical because it uses interest balancing banned by the Supreme Court. The Seventh Circuit failed to properly conduct the history and tradition test in this case. The Seventh Circuit said that arms can be banned consistent with the Second Amendment if a court thinks they are particularly dangerous, whatever that means. The Seventh Circuit used interest balancing, which Bruin specifically said that courts can no longer use. And finally, the Seventh Circuit said that guns can be banned if they're similar to weapons used by the military. In summary, the Seventh Circuit ruling is so bad, it's hard to see just how the Supreme Court could let that stand. And here's how our lawyer Barry says it in the opening of the petition. Bruin called on the nation's legislatures to engage in a sober reassessment of their power to impose burdens on the right to keep and bear arms. The Illinois legislature ignored that call and instead of tapping on the regulatory brakes, it stomped on the gas and passed a sweeping arms ban that included a ban on the most popular rifle in America. Illinois' reaction to Bruin is perhaps not surprising. After all, it is natural for the political branches to chafe at the constitutional constraints and to test them. What is surprising, however, is that after Bruin, the lower courts have upheld this and similar firearms bans without exception. This is surprising because Bruin emphatically called on the lower courts to stop their decade-long practice of giving undue deference to legislative burdens on Second Amendment rights. But in the teeth of that guidance, at least as far as firearm bans are concerned, it has been business as usual. And then Barry adds in a footnote that post-Bruin, governments are 13 to 0 in cases challenging firearm and mag bans. So what's next? Well, first, the Supreme Court has no time limit on accepting or rejecting a case. Some cases wait for months and months or even longer. We hope that won't be the case here, but it is possible. Then the court will either eventually grant the case or deny it. If they grant cert, then what follows is a round of briefing and oral arguments, just like every other stage of the litigation process. But if they say no, 
then the case is not dead. It just goes back to the district court. All of this process we've been through over the past year and a half or so, that has just been over the preliminary injunction motion, which asks to suspend the enforcement of the law while the case is proceeding. The actual consideration of the law itself will then start and we'll go through the discovery process and then we will move for summary judgment at the district court. Um, if the district judge rules against us, as most likely will happen considering the ruling on the preliminary injunction, we'll appeal to the Tenth Circuit and then be back to the Supreme Court eventually. Now there are many legal experts who point out that the Supreme Court prefers not to take a case during the preliminary injunction stage that they would rather wait for that summary judgment stage on the actual law itself. Now we are hopeful that this case will be an exception to that rule, especially with how egregiously bad the Seventh Circuit's ruling was. But I lay all of this out to say that it is possible that the court says no even to this appeal, and that as disappointing as that would be, gun rights supporters should not be discouraged. For instance, a number of bump stock cases were appealed to the Supreme Court and rejected, before the Supreme Court finally granted cert in the Cargill case. So, today's appeal of the Illinois gun ban is a battle in the long protracted war against gun bans, and your National Association for Gun Rights is here for the long haul to see this thing through. And we need your help to keep fighting. So if you're willing to help us end gun bans once and for all in the courts, for blue states and red states alike, please make a generous contribution to our legal war chest at the link below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more updates, and we will see you next time.